You know, Terrence, they swerved me good. What do you mean? I would have never guessed that Sister Abigail was really AJ Styles. Please don't replace me with Kurt Angle. <laughs> Yeah, you know, <laughs> we're gonna get right into it, look, heart blacker than my socks, the fan waiting for that drop, I haven't written in a wig, been double tapping like a creep, saw colors with my last girl, with my new chick I see the world, you know, yeah. She got me plotting, maybe I should put a baby in a chick Fuck happiness, I just like I'm pretty and I'm thick Girl, you know that I'm a Mac with it Shouldn't have to say it twice Yes, sir You don't have to love me Come on You just gotta act right Welcome yeah. back to Talking About Wrestling This is a show for wrestling fans, by wrestling fans I'm your host, T.W., and of course, just like you, I am a wrestling fan. Real quick, before we do anything, wherever you're listening on, whether it be YouTube, whether it be SoundCloud, whether it be iTunes, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and go ahead and leave us a comment. Let us know that you like the show, that you love the show. Leave us a nice rating. You know, five stars is typically pretty good. Um, And yeah, it definitely helps out the show. We definitely want to grow the audience. We want to grow the conversation, bring more people in. Um... It's the week of October 27th. We're coming up on Halloween pretty quick here. And yeah, man, I mean, I can't lie. This was not a great wrestling week for me. Um, <laughs> it just, you know, there, it started off with a lot of promise, you know, with the, with the, the, the big change that happened uh, for the TLC show. But then from there, it kind of petered out. They did some hot shot booking to get us into, into the mode for Survivor Series. And to be honest... They kind of have done the same thing on the Impact side to get ready for Bound for Glory. And to have that combined with the, you know, the constant barrage of this person's leaving Impact and that person's leaving Impact. I got to say right now, I am not very excited for Bound for Glory. I mean, I'm hoping that the show can be good. But to be honest, the card as it stands right now consists of a lot of matches that we've already seen on Impact, and I haven't seen a lot of storylines that are really going to make me want to... Uh, at the end of the day, it's not that I won't want to watch it. It's just that to go in my pocket and shell out 40 50 60 bucks, depending on what type of format I want to watch it in. Um, you know, I'm really on the fence right now about Bound for Glory, especially about paying for it. I mean, like, I'll watch it. You know, maybe I, maybe I'll, you know, find some way to stream it, or maybe if I know someone that's that's streaming it, you know, maybe I'll watch it that way. But right now, I'm just not feeling inspired or compelled to go in my pocket and pay for Bound for Glory. And I feel like a lot of that has to do with the kind of hot shot way that this has been booked, kind of thrown together. Now, that's not with everything, because to be honest, they've been playing out this Bobby Lashley, American Top Team, Dan Lambert story for a while. They've they've taken a little while to put this together. So that story, I think, has had its due diligence in storytelling. But the problem has been week to week with the shows from Impact, because they've had to cut out so much content that they already taped because they got rid of Jeff Jarrett and he was I'm sure a part of the tapings they got rid of low key um they were planning to do something with Alberto El Patron and he's you know now going to appear at the show but he was uh, apparently he was planned to have a match against Jeff Jarrett and now Jeff Jarrett's not there anymore so that and also there's so much using of the uh the global force wrestling language because Everyone had finally bought into the idea of this rebrand, and now that's not happening, and they're branding back to Impact. So a lot of it has just been a huge buzzkill. And so we'll see. You know, uh, listen, Impact, if anybody out there is listening, you guys still got another week to convince me to go in my pocket and pay for Bound for Glory. Or what you could do is put it on the app. That would be a nice boost for your app. That, that might be a nice way to get that out there. You know, let everybody have it for the 8 bucks for the um, – for, for, for the app this month, and that might actually get you a nice little rating for Bound for Glory, so we'll see how that goes. All right. Um, other than that, in more, more fun, exciting news, I got the man, the myth, the legend, Satch, here with me, and uh, we are going to play the game that you love, the game that you tune in every week 
so faithfully to hear. We're going to play Yes, Please, No, Please, Please, Please. Satch, what's going on, my brother? How we doing? You know, Terrence, I haven't been this hyped since the last time I've been hyped. <laughs> so does that mean that you didn't get hyped, you actually stayed hyped? Is that, what that how that works? Uh, from a certain point of view, yeah. Okay, all right, all right, good. Well, uh, hopefully your point of view is better than Mojo's because Mojo's in a storyline that no one knows where it's going. Can't uh, start, can't stop. You know, we have no idea what's happening. Well, Mojo's p- tag partner got a little too close to Natalia. Ah, yes, I have seen that. And so, you know what, Satch, what we're going to do is we're going to throw that up on the new Talking About Wrestling Twitter account Ooh. so everybody can see it. Uh, you guys, if you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and follow us at Talking About Pod, and you can tweet to me and Satch, tweet about things you see and hear on this podcast. And Satch is going to tweet you guys a, a picture of, like he said, Natalia got a little bit too close to Zack Ryder during uh, Under Siege. Zack Ryder was probably Under Siege during that that little situation. Guys, if you want to know the fastest way to get a shout out on our show, send us these little those little weird pictures or moments that you see <laughs> during Raw and SmackDown. Those moments that we love to see are great moments in wrestling crowds, our... Great other, moments in wrestling Twitter. Underrated moments. Yeah, yeah, seriously. We, we can't have enough of those because those... Uh, yeah, it's, that's, it's the unintentional humor. That's the best thing. You know what I mean? When they're not trying to be funny, you know, that's the best. That girl bouncing her ass on Shane is a cont- it's right up there with Styles versus Cena for my favorite moments of the year. Hashtag legend. Hashtag legend, for sure. <laughs> um, so... Before we dive into into uh, our pleases this week, what's really uh, kind of what's what's been um, catching your interest in the world of wrestling this week? Okay, go. <laughs> so Kurt Angle returns to in-ring action in WWE for eleven years. In right. reality, it's about six months, but right. he returns <laughs> to WWE for the first time in eleven years, and they whip that out on us on a Friday afternoon. Right. Yeah, yeah. That okay. I got a thought on this, Terrence. Okay. That Kurt Angle's in-ring return is bigger than the Shield reunion because this is a legend that's coming out of air quotes retirement. Right. For a match. You know, I I I agree with you, Sash. The the Angle return was a bigger deal than the Shield reunion because the Shield reunion is. Listen, you know how much WWE loves and romanticizes its. Attitude era, right? It was the most profitable time in the history of the whole wrestling business. And of course, WWE is very, you know, fond and protective of that. And they know that there's a lot of nostalgia surrounding that. So to have Kurt Angle, who was one of the biggest stars of that era, become available, you know, is first of all, you know, they were sitting on that for WrestleMania. They were hoping to save that for WrestleMania. That was going to be a huge selling point for WrestleMania. So according to the, according to the internet, they gave Kurt a physical when he signed, and uh-huh. they said like, all right, we'll keep you on the back burner. Right. Right. Until we're ready. And then when they found out Roman wasn't able to go, they gave Kurt a quick physical that Friday. When they made the official determination that Roman couldn't go, mm-hmm. they gave Kurt a quick physical. And then as soon as he passed it, they tweeted out the notice that he right. would be replacing Roman. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that's really awesome. And one thing I want to give WWE absolute credit for right there is they came out with the big guns. You know what I mean? They, they could have just made that a two-on-five. Uh, they could. There's a lot of ways they could have approached having to remove Roman from that card, but they came with you know a huge attraction on short notice, and it created this enormous, amazing hype for TLC kind of out of nowhere. There was already good anticipation for the show because a lot of people they did a good job presenting the Shield re rebuild reformation whatever, and people wanted to see that, um, and. Replacing Roman with Kurt, I think that may have even actually increased how much people wanted to see it. So here's the million dollar question Uh that'll set the next month or so. How long is Roman out? Because they book their shows around what Roman's doing. Uh And when Roman's not here, and each of the last three years, he's missed time for something. Uh Three years ago, it was an abdominal injury last year was the drug suspension so he's missed time for various things right and they've had to elevate other people in that stead which has made things red hot ambrose had to carry that feud with triple h dolph got the sting moment at survivor series amazing so 
who, I think, and we'll get to this later, I think Braun stands to benefit from Roman not being around for a month. Ooh, or so. listen, man, you know what? So you just touched on two different points that are definitely going to be in our pleases. So that's telling me that we need to go ahead and jump ahead into our pleases. So, <clears throat> Satch, what did you see from WWE this week that you loved? What has you saying, yes, please? So, my yes, please, is going to a match that was booked on two days' notice with a guy who had just had to fly 18 hours from Chile to Minnesota for AJ Styles versus Finn Balor. And, you know... Hold on, Chile, for one second. When you said Chile, the first thing that I thought of was when they were rescuing the Chilean miners and there was one guy who was getting rescued and his baby mama and his girlfriend were both there. <laughs> I like, yo, put me back down there. Put me back down. No. Is that where we found Bray Wyatt? <laughs> maybe. Maybe that's where they found Sister Abigail. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. So go. Chile. Go. So AJ. All right. For all the grief we give WWE about mailing it in on some of the B pay-per-views. Oh, yeah. They really did step up here. Mm. They had to replace Bray Wyatt for meningitis. For we think it's meningitis. It may have been the mumps. We're not 100% sure, and I'm not a doctor. And neither Which one of those comes from eating booty? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and so rather than replacing him with somebody like Jericho, who we mm. all love, but we've seen it before, uh -huh. rather than replacing him with someone like Elias, who mm. I love, but we've seen before, they reach out to the SmackDown roster and pull SmackDown's ace, AJ Styles, to fly back here. And this tells me this tells me a couple things. One, they count on AJ to be able to carry anyone at any time. True. And be their Mr. Reliable whenever they need to put somebody in a match to make it must see. And number two is that they know what dream matches the fans want to see. They just don't give it to us until ding, they ding, have ding, to. Ding, 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 ding. Hundred percent. You are dead right. They know, and I say this all the time, Satch, because you notice how wrestling gets really good from January to April. You ever notice that? How it's, you know, from January to April, they're doing stuff that you just have to see, but the rest of the year, it's like, yeah. And sometimes it's like, why am I even watching this? <laughs> like, they know the whole time what it is you want to see. They just save it for when you're going to pay the most for it, for when you're going to get on a plane and go to New Orleans or Orlando or San Francisco to watch a show, right? I mean, listen, they're smart. They are not the only people who have ever successfully ran a wrestling promotion for no reason. They know what people want, and they know how to make them wait for it, and when's the right time to deliver it to them to keep them coming back for more, you know? You, you might even say they're good at this. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, final thought here? Yeah, so Styles versus Balor was my favorite match of the night, and it turned the paper that plus the angle reunion turned the pay-per-view into a must-see for me. Now, I don't think we need a long feud with each other, but I think this nice one-shot between them, maybe have another one-shot next time Raw and SmackDown have an event, Th this was a fantastic match for me. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, man. That, that, that's, that was really good stuff. Um, my yes, please, is also going to come from the TLC pay-per-view. My yes, please, goes to the match between Emma and Asuka. Now, when I started watching this match, I was like, first of all, we talked about this last week. I was like, oh, no, Emma, you know, your pretty face is going to get destroyed. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. Blah, 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 blah. But... This couldn't have been more the opposite, right? I mean, they had a great competitive match. They could have put anyone in there for a squash. They could have put Dana Brooke in there. They could have put Alicia Fox in there. Uh, they could have put anyone in there to do a squash. But instead, they gave her Emma. And not only did they give her Emma, but they crafted the match in a way in which Emma got a lot of offense. Emma got to put the debuting superhero babyface in Jeopardy. She got to carry most of that match offensively, and I thought it was really good because when's the last time we've actually seen Asuka put in that dangerous of a situation? There was a lot of moments during that match where it looked like Asuka was, uh, where it looked like Emma was saying to Asuka, hey, you're in the big time now, and it's not going to go, you know, the way it did down on NXT. And I love that. I love when you can feel the competition between the performers. And I felt like there was a lot of that right there. And at the same time, it showcased the fact that 
while Asuka came in with this mystique, Emma is definitely capable of holding her own in the ring with someone who people consider a great performer. And it just reminded everybody that Emma is a good wrestler. Emma's a really good wrestler. But for whatever reason, man, like, you know, I don't know if it's because she doesn't have the fake boobs. I don't know if it's because whatever reason. But for whatever, for whatever reason, she hasn't been their pick. You know, she hasn't been their pick for the Alexa Bliss spot. She hasn't been their pick for the Charlotte Flair spot. And she just keeps getting pushed down the card. You know what I mean? And and she's good, man. She's so good. She's always been a good wrestler. Then she went back to NXT and developed the evil Emma character. And she's just been good. And they just haven't been able to do anything with her. They tried to do the whack Emmalina gimmick with her, which, you know, I've heard is what Lana is doing now. And if that's true, then thank God Emma didn't do that because that's horrible. It just, it's, it's okay for Lana to be doing that. You know what I mean? Because we don't expect much of Lana from a wrestling standpoint, but Emma is a good wrestler. She showed everybody that by uh, having this debut match with Asuka and yeah, man, I just I think this was one of the rare occasions when you have a match that the winner and the loser both come out looking good, and that's good booking. So, Asuka and Emma, you get my yes, please. Well, Terrence, there are only two ways to get pushed in modern WWE. Uh-oh. One is to be The Rock's cousin. <laughs> number two is to have the power of 1.3 billion yeah. people. You guys can't see Satch right now, but Satch has been growing out his beard, and Satch looks like um, a brown Dan Levitard. <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a more thin face, a more thin face. No offense, Dan. But you know, Dan Levitard is actually like, he's not like a, like a big like husky dude. If you, see, like, if you see him, he actually, he has like a, what I would call a very regular body type. You know what I mean? Like, he's not like a, he, his face looks like he's like an offensive lineman, but he's just, he has like a, you know, what you would call like, I guess like a normal size body type, but ah. it's just funny. I don't know. <laughs> but the girl in the beard out. Oh, man. All right, Satch. So, we heard what you like, but with the good also comes the bad. So, tell us what you didn't like. What did you see in the world of WWE this week that has you saying no, please? All right, let's keep let's take up residence here in the Raw Women's Division because no. that's where my no, please is coming from. So, my no, please is Alexa Bliss beating Mickey James in the way that she did, and this is starting to be my pet peeve with all of Alexa Bliss's feuds. There's a formula to this, Terrence. Stick with me. All right. She runs them down on the mic. She runs them down on the mic in things that go beyond their gimmick. Mm -hmm. Number two, she wins cleanly. Uh huh. Number three, mm. she runs them down again and then moves on to the next few. Yeah. So this is starting to bug me. When she came up on SmackDown or even in NXT, she'd kind of have to cheat and do sneaky things to win. Mm -hmm. And now that she's on Raw. She just powerhouses over the entire division. Right. And the biggest problem to me is that nobody comes out looking well. This right. whole storyline was about how Mickey is too old to hang in the ring with her. Right. And this reminds me of an old Chris Jericho storyline. So Jericho was new. He was fairly young, and he's cutting a promo running down his opponent for being old and washed up. Right. He gets back to the locker room. The other guy confronts him in front of the entire room and says, look what you just did. So... If I'm a, I'm a washed up old man, and if you beat me, who cares? Because you beat up an old man. And if I win, and I am going to win tonight, then you just lost to an old guy. So think about it. Right. Yeah, no, no, I mean, that makes sense. Now, I have a couple of thoughts on that. One thing is, I think the age thing is an especially sensitive topic for wrestlers because a lot of them are, you know, not in their 20s. It, it takes a long time to get good at wrestling, unless you're one of those exceptional people who picks up something and is great at it right away you know being a pro wrestler requires a lot of um a lot of mastering of crowds um a lot of you know mastering of your own expressions uh remembering the 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 sequences of, of a match you know what i mean like and also obviously getting down the timing to make your match look crisp and good there are a thousand and four arm bars that need to be learned exactly so there's a lot that goes into it and so i think 
you know, it, it takes a while to get good at wrestling. So a lot of your better wrestlers are in their, you know, 30s, right? And so uh, a, what happens is when people get into their 30s, they start getting more conscious about their age because, you know, you're you're not a kid anymore. And so the, the thing like what you're saying, like with Chris Jericho running down his opponent based on his age and even with Mickey James, you know, her getting run down based on her age, that does hit home because it slices a little deep with them because they are kind of feeling their own mortality a little bit. But... The thing that you mentioned about Alexa Bliss that I agree with is the winning clean. Like, when she beat Bailey clean every time, just plants her in the middle with a DDT, and it's like... You you kill the the good guy that way. You know what I mean? Like you kill him. Like you just, you know the good guy's supposed to have this valiant cause, and the bad guy is supposed to be you know like a cheater, and they just win through underhanded tactics or the babyface getting distracted or something. But Alexa is just beating these people clean. It's making her look you know really strong, but it's also killing the competition. You know what I mean? Like. If she beat Mickey in a way to where Mickey came out looking strong, then you could see more matches between her and Mickey. But it's like if she beat her clean and there's no reason that you need to see that again, then what's the point? I mean, let's recap really quickly her main roster feuds. Becky Lynch comes out looking worse. Naomi actually comes out looking good. Right. Maybe due to WrestleMania being in her hometown. Uh Uh, Bailey, uh, let's not get there. (laughs) Sasha Banks comes out looking worse. Mickey James comes out looking worse. Yeah, so so you're you're right. You called it though. I mean, like Alexa is uh, she's turning to the career killer around here. <laughs> we don't need that. All right, so here we go. My no please this week is a bit of a broader picture look at at the way things are being done right now, and I did not like the way that. Uh, You you know how you mentioned what is WWE going to do now that Roman Reigns is out for a period of time? Well, I'm going to tell you what they're going to do. They're going to abandon any and all storylines so that we can do group warfare for Survivor Series. Group warfare. Right. I mean, come on, man. Like, Listen, there's a way to get into any storyline. You can write... You know, you can plant little seeds uh, to, to bloom into the story that you want, but... To do what they did on Monday night where you just you have a show going and then out of nowhere, the SmackDown roster, everyone, good guy, bad guy, enemies and friends all together for the cause of beating up Raw. Huh? I mean, like that made no sense. That made no sense. Kurt Angle came out at the top of the show, announced all the matches for Survivor Series, which I'm okay with just laying out the matches like that, like. I don't need a build to a match when the the story of the match is one brand's champion versus another brand's champion. And then as you go down the card, you're seeing that it's a night full of champions from one brand versus champions from the opposite brand. Now you've created a whole show where the theme is Raw versus SmackDown, best versus best. So that in itself is the story, and that makes fine sense. But this whole under siege angle... That was crap, man. It just it, it did nothing for me. It did nothing for me, really. Like, there was no reasoning for it. You know, Shane's like, we're firing the opening shot to get ready for Survivor Series. But why? Like, for what? I mean, Under Siege was only the second best angle this week after Kurt. <laughs> no, it wasn't the same. It was the third, fourth, or fifth best angle. I don't know how many angles there were, but it was at the bottom of that. Well, I'm sure near the bottom of that list. It wasn't worse than uh, Jason Jordan and Elias. Yo, I got a fun fact for you. And I, I'm going to drop a fun fact on you guys, too. So... What was our pay-per-view called? TLC? TLC, yeah. All right, so TLC (laughs) was the second time in WWE history that a father and son have wrestled on the same pay-per-view. After the last, after the multiple times that Vince and Shane have wrestled. Nice. That's pretty good. They weren't really fathers. Damn it, Satch. (laughs) Satch, shut up. (laughs) All right, uh, final word on this? I mean, it was definitely weird because one... SmackDown are you, is usually considered the face mm-hmm. in these types of feuds, and Shane is the face manager, is the face commissioner. Well, so it was not anymore. So it's odd that SmackDown just right. takes the attention. And they also on SmackDown they followed this up by sowing some seeds of dissension between Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon. Daniel Bryan was kind of you know saying how he didn't necessarily agree with Shane McMahon's approach to doing this. So I'm interested to see where that goes. That is a little interesting. But you know, there was one point that I liked and they 
put a lot of mishma- a mishmash group of wrestlers into that invasion, but wow. I like the people that weren't there. They didn't include Jinder and the Sings. They didn't include the Usos, mm-hmm. and they didn't include Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, okay. because if each one of those people were there, it would have answered, it would have opened up some other logic-breaking questions. Right. Yeah, logic doesn't matter anymore, (laughs) because it's Survivor Series time, so F your logic. All right. Um, Yeah, you know, this kind of actually goes back to what I was saying earlier about uh, Bound for Glory, right? It's the same thing, right? If if you just, if you don't give me proper build to a, a story... I may still watch it, but I'm just not going to be interested in it. And that's what it comes down to. If I'm not interested in it, I'm just not going to care. And that's kind of where I am right now with this Survivor Series is that, you know, the lure of the champion versus champion from brand versus brand, like that is that that's intriguing. But the build to whatever is going to happen with this SmackDown attacking Raw thing is just doing nothing for me. I mean, you could say the show is being written by a bunch of dummies. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and that's SmackDown and Raw as well. All right. So we heard what you liked. We heard what you didn't like. But as wrestling fans, one of our favorite things to do is kind of book the show ourselves. So what have you been wanting to see? What is it about WWE TV that has been planting seeds in your mind? What have you been saying? Please, please show me this. The winner and new. Please, please. <laughs> Terrence, I want to see a title change. I need to see a new champion. And here's what I'll tell. Here's why I want it. I'll tell you. So. They announced that we're going to have champion versus champion for the four counterpart titles. Right. World champion, WWE versus Universal, women's yeah. versus women's, mm-hmm. Intercontinental versus the U.S., mm-hmm. and tag versus tag. Right. So the tag team match, super hot in my opinion, Shield versus the Usos. Oh, yeah. The world title matchup, Brock versus Jinder, mm-hmm. fully on board with that. But the other two matches, the uh, women's title match, Alexa Bliss versus Natalia. And the mid-card match of Baron Corbin versus Miz both feature heels versus heels. And Mm. none of them are really cool heels that will get the crowd on their side like Kevin Owens. They're all heels that we boo for real. So that's not... Now, now I'm not hating on them for being good heels. But that's not good in a match twice in a show where you have two people that the crowd isn't going to cheer in their match. So I feel like we need to fix one of them. Either Natalia maybe needs to lose her title, or maybe either Miz or Baron Corbin need to lose their title to a face, because Brock versus Jinder works because of how opposite they are. Right. Shield versus the Usos will be probably be the show stealer. Mm-hmm. We need more baby faces involved in the title picture. But Terrence, doesn't this mean... Like, this points out an obvious flaw in WWE in that they rely... They realize they want to push the heels for the rest of the non-WrestleMania season. Right. And then they don't know what to do with the baby faces. You know, I, I think you're right. And I think that the... The issue is not so much they don't want to push baby faces. It's that they don't know how to push more than one baby face. I think the only thing that, like, think about it. On Raw, who are the real baby faces, right? You got Finn Balor. Roman, supposedly. Roman Reigns, right? And the only way they know how to push baby faces is making them be, like, dominant. You know what I mean? Like, and everybody can't be dominant, right? And so, like, they struggle with having more than one guy look strong to a to a point. So... So you get you so, and you need bad guys. You need bad guys to put the baby face in peril so that they can look strong, right? So what you end up with is a bunch of bad guys. You and because, and if you want your good guys to win on the big shows, on the Royal Rumble, on SummerSlam, on WrestleMania, then you do need the heels to win in the meantime, in between time. So that's why you that's how you get what we have now. So I mean, you know, Brock, Brock is, Brock is Brock, right? Yeah, and. You, People cheer Brock like they did against Goldberg. Um, I'm very interested, interested to see what they do with Brock versus Gender, though, because I think this could be a huge moment for Gender. Yo, I want to see both Singh brothers get F5'd at the same time. You'll probably see that. I want to see Brock pick one up and throw them onto Paul Heyman. You'll pro- uh, onto well, Paul not. Heyman? Yeah, yeah. No, he I want to see Heyman. Paul Heyman catch one and then do oh, another F5. That is not going to happen. <laughs> 
I doubt Paul Heyman can lift one of the same brothers. <laughs> All right. Um, my please, please for this week is please, please take control of your characters. Now, Bailey, she went out with the uh, what was it? The collarbone injury? Uh, something shoulder related. Yeah, shoulder or co- something like that. Was it the like Aaron Rodgers? No, it wasn't the Aaron Rodgers. It was. The, I think it was the shoulder. And I think it was a rotator cuff. Maybe. Don't quote mm-hmm. me on that. Anyway. So, but we all remember the night that she was in the ring on Raw cutting a promo and the fans were booing her. Now, while this looked completely classless on the part of the fans, I think Bailey had a little bit of a wake-up moment. Um, Bailey has talked so much about how she's been a lifelong wrestling fan, so she clearly understands the concept that you got to be a tough guy. It, if we want to suspend our disbelief, as they say, then... We want to feel like we're watching people fight. And so Bailey needed to be more of a fighter and less of this quote unquote childlike character. She had been so nice, so soft, so goofy, and that's why people were turning on her and booing her. And since Bailey has come back from that in, from that injury, if you've noticed, she's been much more aggressive. And it's been good for her. Like people aren't booing her anymore, they're cheering her, they like her. Uh, because they can take her more seriously. You know what I mean? Like, she's not just, like, a character who's there for the purpose of getting beat up. Uh, at least she doesn't look that way, right? And so um, she took control. I, you know, I'm not sure if they gave her that directive backstage, but I wouldn't be surprised if she just, you know, like I said, went home and said, hey, look, I need to change the way that people see me a little bit, right? I still need to have all the stuff they like, all the marketable stuff, you know, the things that kids like, but I don't need to be some naive you know, afraid, almost childlike character. And so she's been more of, you know, more of a tough character since she's come back. Now, this brings me to the rumored Braun Strowman babyface turn. Ooh. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because like we just talked about, WWE only knows one way to book a babyface. You got to be the Superman. And Roman Reigns is their Superman. And so that leaves everybody else to do something gimmicky. So if Braun Strowman is going to be a babyface, I'm just saying, Braun, if you're smart, take control of your character, man. Turn down any ideas they offer you that involves you doing anything stupid, involves you joking, involves you laughing, and definitely anything that involves you dancing. Because they will have you in the ring twerking with Naomi with glow sticks in your mouth in six months if you let them if you if you let them point you in any direction. Braun, you gotta put your foot down, man. Put your foot down. Take control of your character and stay the exact same monster among men that you've been that has been leading people to cheer for you when they hear that. (laughs) Isn't that a funny thing, though? We like the heels until they turn face, and we hate the faces until they turn heels. Well, I like the WrestleMania Monday crowd. Yeah. (laughs) Well, you let Michael Cole tell it. See, I don't know, man. I I don't really agree that this whole Braun is a babyface thing. I don't think Braun's a babyface. The only thing babyface about Braun is that he beats up Roman. That's the only thing that's babyface about Braun. People like Braun because when Braun comes out, people are going to get their butt kicked. And people like to watch the like to watch other people get their butt kicked. That's why they go to a wrestling show, right? And so that's why I go to the dark alley at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, um, so I mean, I don't think Braun is a true babyface. And so the idea of having him, you know, be a good guy, I just. It, it doesn't seem to work to me. You know what Braun sort of reminds me of is how years ago you'd have guys like, I don't want to pull out the biggest name there, but you'd have guys like Steve Austin or Edge or Jericho in a way who would play the same character, or, or Randy Orton in a way, who would play the same character, <coughs> whether they're face or heel, and the only thing that changed was the crowd. And I right. think with Braun, we like him the the way he is now. We like seeing his absurd feats of strength. Right. He can make a feud red hot because he feels like a monster force that you want to see right. come out there. But WWE has this thing where when the guy's a babyface, they're going to change the character. Yes. And the character was a thing that we liked in the first place. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I don't... <clears throat> Remember when Ryback turned face and they have him giving motivational speeches? Right. That didn't work. 
Yo, I'm so glad you brought that up because that is the textbook example of how to go wrong by listening to what they tell you. He was trying so hard to do everything they were telling him. He was regurgitating his lines perfectly, right? You know what I mean? He was, he was <clears throat> like you said, giving motivational speeches. He came on and, you know, recited his story from the Chris Jericho podcast because somebody on staff heard that and said, hey, man, this makes you really personable. Why don't you go out there and tell that story? And rather than giving a condensed version, he gave the whole damn story from the podcast. And it just wasn't working, man. It just wasn't working because it was too much switching of what it was that we liked about you. And if you're Braun Strowman, if you're smart, you won't let them do that to you. So Braun, please, please take control of your character and don't let them turn you into the new Funkasaurus. <laughs> Goodness, James, don't put that image in my mind. Yes, Funk is on a roll. Uh, and now Funk is on uh, Fox News at night. I don't know if you've seen that or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Wait, yeah. Really? The Funkasaurus is now a contributor, a regular contributor on Fox News. It's the funniest thing in the world. He's actually a pretty interesting dude, though. I heard him on a podcast, and he talked a lot about like his family life and stuff like that. He's, he's kind of an interesting dude. I... Would not have expected him to have that type of <clears throat> Yeah, he's, he's, he's an interesting cat. But you know what else is interesting, Satch, that I wasn't interested in before until you started talking about? It's the Los Inglos Bernales story. And I need to hear what's the next chapter in this story. Okay, so last week we talked about how Tetsuya Naito got a main event push. The crowd rejected him. They had a poll to decide what the main event match at Wrestle Kingdom 8 would be, and his match lost. Mm. This is the moment that would set the course for the next four years. So he got his title match in the middle of the card at Wrestle Kingdom, lost an unimpressive match, and then went back into the tag division. And he teamed with a guy, a Mexican wrestler on tour in Japan, named La Sombra. La Sombra. You may now know today as Andrade Cien Almas. (laughs) So Naito and La Sombra teamed for a while in the tag division, he, they tried to reheat some of his baby face power, but the crowd was still rejecting him for months afterwards. Mm. They just did not want him to be the top guy. So Naito muddled through the next year in the tag division before losing another unimpressive match at Wrestle Kingdom 9 to AJ Styles. Mm. So New Japan, they have these contracts with inter- their international brother and sister companies to send guys on tour when they become stale. So they sent him to Mexico to CMLL, where he teamed with... La Sombra again and joined his faction called Los Ingobernables, the Ungovernables. Ah. And this was a place for people who felt like they had been mistreated by management, mistreated by the crowd, mistreated by something, and so they've rejected everybody else. This storyline was so red hot that when Naito returned, New Japan loved it so much that they licensed the Los Ingobernables name, say that five times fast, (laughs) and had Naito bring that gimmick back to Japan, say, you rejected me, management put, set me up to fail, now I'm rejecting you, I'm rejecting management, and I'm rejecting your heroes. And this is where Tetsuya Naito turned heel, but won the crowd. Hmm. Okay, yeah, this, is, this is like story time with Satch. I'm like, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm riveted, waiting for the next installment of this story. This is good stuff, man. And next week, we'll tell you what happened to the heel side of the super push. What happened to Kazuchika Okada over the past four years? Oh man, yo, I'm looking forward to this, man. I'm looking forward to this. Um, one thing I'm not looking forward to right now is uh, Impact Wrestling Bound for Glory. Um, Ooh. I, uh, you know. It's just been it's been a combination of things, man. It's been like a lot of the the buzz kill from the GFW stuff, the Jeff Jarrett stuff, and I like right now I'm on the fence. I don't know if I'm gonna shell out my money and and buy uh, Bound for Glory. I had really been enjoying the Global Wrestling Network app. There's a lot of great matches on there. If you guys want to go see you know Kurt Angle's last few years of great matches, then you definitely want to grab that app. If you want to see AJ Styles in his prime, if you want to see Bobby Roode in his prime, if you want to see Eric Young in his prime, if you want to see Bully Ray, the best Bully Ray ever was, you really want to check out that app. Um, I'm hoping 
that they put Bound for Glory on the app because that would give me some bonus, some incentive to want to continue watching this product. But I'm really cooling off on it. It's just that, you know, there hasn't been consistent direction. There's been, you know, wrestlers leaving left and right. And it's just it, it's killing my ability to be excited about the show. I mean, I definitely feel that because, OK, one of TNA's benefits and curses is that they film two months within a couple of days. So you see, like, the storylines develop, but they don't really have an end because, mm-hmm. guys, there's so much turnover there. Loki's leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, other people are leaving. Yeah. And other guys leave before their story is really finished. And the management of Impact, it is, like, it's so weird sometimes. I'm just glad they didn't name Johnny Impact Johnny Global. Because then, yeah. re- <laughs> then they'd have to rebrand uh... him, too. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. So we'll see where this goes. Um, you know, like I said, man, you guys, you, you still got a week to try to sell me on Bound for Glory. But as of right now, you're not getting my money, man. You got to do something. You got to offer something that's going to make me more interested in it. Either that or... Or I'm already subscribing to the Global Wrestling Network. You can put it up on the app and I'll gladly watch it. But right now, I'm not about to pluck down 40, 50 bucks for it. You know, guys, I want to give you an underrated deep cut from the Impact Library. I want to recommend New Year's Revolution to no uh, Final Resolution 2006. Watch that and tweet at tweet it at TW Talking About, at Talking About Pod, and at Satch and Dave C with what your thoughts are. Yeah, that's, that's a, so you said Final Resolution 2006? Final Resolution 2006. All right, so I'm going to do that too, man. I'm going to check that out, and we'll talk about it next week. All right, um, like Sash just said, man, you know, the, 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 oh gosh, the, the Twitter, the Twitter is up now. So at Talking About Pie, go ahead and get at us, man, and we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> All right, guys, we definitely covered a lot of stuff. Um, You know, as usual, thanks to Satch for being such a big part of this show. And thanks to you guys, man. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the show. Uh, And, um, you know, I just I just want to jump into the wrestling conversation with everyone else. I think it's always good to have a variety of voices talking on the subject. You get a lot of people who have, you know, different agendas. A lot of people want to work for WWE or, you know, get in good favor with certain people in the media. And I really don't have any of those, uh, any of those motives here. I'm really just trying to, you know, uh, I, I just, I, I enjoy wrestling, you know what I mean? I enjoy wrestling and, uh, I want to, I want to, you know, have wrestling conversations with other wrestling fans. And, and that's the whole reason why we do this show. Um, so I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I enjoy putting it together. Um, you know, in a nutshell, you know, this is a, uh, a, a little bit of a frustrating week in wrestling, you know, because of some of the booking stuff, you know, not just on Raw and SmackDown, but also on Impact. You know, I feel like they're kind of throwing a lot of that Bound for Glory st- storytelling together. They got one more week to earn my money, and I hope they get it together. Give me something that I actually want to see because, yeah, I mean, the more good shows there are, the more entertainment that is for me right and more entertainment that is for you the more entertainment that is for all wrestling fans so i'm definitely hoping that comes together one more quick reminder satch gave us our gem of the week Uh, i believe he said it was final resolution 2006 so i'm definitely going to check that out and you know as you guys are watching that make sure you you can tweet me at tw talking about or you know um or or at um talking about pod and you know hashtag tbw hashtag you know final resolution 2006 and you know let us know what you think of the show all right that's our show for this week thank you guys so much for tuning in like i said before make sure you like rate comment subscribe and most importantly tell a friend to tell a friend i want to bring more wrestling fans into the conversation we can have good fun wrestling talk um yeah you know i'm not an insider i'm just a fan just like you guys so i just want to have you know good fun wrestling conversations with other people who enjoy wrestling the way that i do uh you can tweet me at tw talking about you can tweet satch at satch and dave c you can tweet the show any questions or comments that you have at talking about pod we're going to keep a lot of fun content coming on there for you guys so uh enjoy the rest of the week in wrestling enjoy raw enjoy smackdown enjoy nxt and uh, we'll see you guys next week. And then Mama told me I'm a superstar. She did. Yeah. My aunt said I got the cutting edge. She so did. I guess it's only right I take a decade, a decade, then it's four more years, then it's Kanye West for president. Yeah. You know that I'm a man with it. I should have.
good enough to say it twice You don't have to love me You just gotta act right yeah. I don't fall in love though Every night gonna be a fun night